Well, well, well. Would this be another walkthrough? Yes, it would. Where's my pen? Oh, it's here. I've got it. This is another walkthrough. Oh, my word. I've not, I've not done one of these for, for months. This is special. Year 11. My year 11. I hope you're well. Here you'll find your paper one for your recent mocks. I do hope you're all okay. For any other student out there, I do hope that you find this useful. For my year 11s at my academy, we do not cover glaciers, so I will not be going through glaciers in this video, even though I do find them quite cool. <laughs> ah, glacier pun. Oh, I'm so not cool. And today I'm going to go through the general structures of how to answer some of the questions in this paper one living with the physical environment mock if you aren't revising already i advise that you start <laughs> um it will save a lot of stress in september i am recording this video in november of 2022 okay without further ado let's get into it question 1.1 State what is meant by a natural hazard. We've got that nice one mark there. And of course, with a natural hazard, we're talking about a, well, basically a natural event. Okay. That poses risk. Okay. To generally human activity. Could cause death and injury that sort of palaver this is one of those questions where revision is just key just having that definition in your mind will help there so nice straightforward start okay 1.2 using figure one so automatically now we know we need to be using figure one it's asked we need to be using it describe the distribution of active volcanoes Three marks. So for us, it would be E, C, S, and we're using that figure. So when we're talking about distribution, if it's not asking for anything specific, I would generally go for most and least. But remember to read the context of the question because it might give you a bit of information with the context of the question. So I can see that most volcanoes <clears throat> are happening in these areas around here. And handily, it tells you what that is. It's the Pacific Ring of Fire. So I can see that most volcanoes are forming around the Pacific Ring of Fire, particularly to, say, the north of the Pacific Plate, whereas there are few volcanoes in the south of the Pacific Plate, near the Antarctic Plate. So there is ways you can go about this. There's not one way to answer this, but generally you're looking for most and least so you could argue that there is a high amount of volcanoes to the east of the Nazca Plate, whereas there are less active volcanoes to the west of the Nazca Plate. So there's lots of different ways you can answer this. But the answer here is in that map. So slow down, don't rush. Okay, compass points, compass points. 1.3, label two types of plate margins or boundaries shown in figure two. Two marks, easy peasy if you've been revising year 11. So we can see here, we've got this plate moving side by side. So this would be a conservative um, uh, boundary. And then we've got two plates moving towards each other, which for us here would be destructive or if we're being technical you could also say a collision boundary as well 
but play it safe, stick with destructive. Easy peasy two marks. On the subject of easy peasy marks, name the year with the most amount of deaths. Well, if you open your eyes, the answer is clear to see. It is the year 2011. Please be careful with questions like this, my wonderful year 11s, because in the rush, oh, wow, yes, you can miss these easy ones, okay? In fact, some of you may miss graph, graph questions altogether because you're in so much of a rush. <laughs> Slow down. Okay, don't rush these, okay? These are your gimme gimme marks, easy peasies. Okie dokie, right, we are at our first mid-tariff question. Six marks. So the first thing we're doing here, year 11, is we are slowing down. and We're reading the question. With reference to figure four, and a tectonic hazard you have studied, explain so that's our command word the primary and secondary effects of a tectonic hazard take a second read it and then start to pull it apart we have got our ECS times 2 now this works quite nicely ECS ECS Tectonic hazard you have studied. Well, that gives us kind of two options. You will know this. You can have Nepal or you can have L'Aquila, Italy. So you've got two options there. Go with what you're feeling most confident about. And we're looking here at just explaining the mechanics of primary and secondary. So we know for primary, it is basically an immediate direct result of the tectonic hazard. Whereas the secondary is a, well, is a result of the primary. There we go. So primaries can include buildings being destroyed, infrastructure being damaged, sewage pipes, cold water pipes being destroyed. Secondaries could include lawlessness, disease being spread because of that sewage and water pipe damage. It could be deaths due to poor medical care in the weeks and months after the tectonic hazard could be joblessness, so on and so forth. Key for this one, don't let this one trip you up. Remember, homelessness, this is a secondary. Because when your home is destroyed, you don't become homeless within a couple of weeks or so, you know, chill out in a cardboard box for a little bit. No, nope, you become homeless straight away. So homelessness is a is a prime primary no yes wow my oh. <laughs> nearly caught me there homelessness is a primary <laughs> feeling a bit rusty but anyway there you go so ECS times two primary secondary you're linking to the figures so you can see here building destruction public transport's been damaged People have been taken into hospital care. There you go. I apologise about that. I had a complete brain melt there. <laughs> what you see is what you get. Right. This is an interesting one, this. Because this is the global atmospheric circulation model. But instead of giving you the cells up here, which is generally what people tend to look at, the northern hemisphere, it actually asks you to find them for the southern hemisphere down here now luckily they are exactly the same so the big one nearest to the equator is the Hadley 
The one in the middle, the one that doesn't act in the same way as the others, is the ferrule. I don't know if it's one or two L's. I think it's one L, I think. Let's go two, why not? Um, and C is the polar. There we go. And it would be exactly the same up here as well. Lovely stuff. Okay, climate change suggest, which is just a hidden explain. How climate change affects people and the environment. It is four marks, so we're generally looking here at EC times two. EC, EC. So here, I mean, what, what could we talk about here? Uh, for people, you could talk about migration, mass migration due to climate change. You could talk about deaths due to natural hazards, you know, sort of uh, increased hurricane activity, etc. Environment, similar sort of, uh, similar sort of framing. You could talk about the, I don't know, the increase in desertification. You could talk about floods. You could talk about species extinction. Quite a few things that could be down there. But remember, it's only a four marker. It's not looking for loads of detail. So just bear that in mind. It's a hidden explain. EC times two. Looking good. Okie dokie. 1.8. Interesting one, this one. Two marks. Three, three word, well, three spaces to put a word in but more than three words. So with these, take your time, speak it out in your mind, because often if it doesn't quite flow right in your mind, it's probably not gonna fit. So let's have a look. Global temperatures are expected to increase. This means that more of the world's Oceans. Let's switch off storms. Higher temperatures may also mean higher intensity. And that there is your two mark. Three, oh yeah, two marks. There you go. Done, dusted. Easy stuff. Right then, here is your first high tariff question. Your well, your nine marks plus three spag. So let's have a little look at this. Using an example you have studied, evaluate your response to a tropical storm. Now, I don't want to over egg this because what I do not want year 11, and I've always said this, is I don't want you to look at these big nine markers and think, oh my Christ, how do I do this, okay? You need to look at these and think to yourself, right, there are there are 12 marks here, I am going to grab them. Okay, so don't be overawed by these nine markers. So you've got ECS times three. And then in that stretch, you're looking to hook back to that evaluation. You're wanting to link it back to evaluation. So here... You're thinking about the goods and the bads. And your example for a tropical storm, guys, is Typhoon Haiyan. So you're thinking to yourself now, right, well, do I think it was generally good, generally bad? So you may say, well, actually, it was good because they had the USS George Washington From the USA went and supported taking with it trained many trained soldiers heavy equipment helicopters so on and so forth but then you might say actually a negative aspect of the response might have been you know say the cost the time okay you could maybe talk about the deaths a lot of people died during this um, uh, uh, typhoon. 
But then you might say, but actually, you know what? I, I think there were good elements to this. For example, they actually re rebuilt Taklaban Airport quite quickly. And then after all of that, then you need to make sure just, just for safekeeping, just get in a bit of a summary. You'll notice I'm not calling it a conclusion, okay? Your summary just wants to kind of be a breeze over of what you've said already. Remember, there should be nothing new in your summary. It should just be a capture of this, okay? Now, it's an evaluate. So you will also have in there a little bit of AO3, okay, a little bit of application. It wants you to make an argument. So remember AO1 is your knowledge, it's what do you know. AO2 is your understanding, do you get it? And AO3 is your application, can you actually make an argument? OK. So do consider that again. I don't want to over or these answers. They're actually quite straightforward. Revision is key. Spag marks here. So make sure you're using lots of technical language, capital letters, strong punctuation. Uh, yeah, try to grab these as well. Uh, yeah. You'll be amazed, actually, year 11. Let me tell you this. In the most recent exam series that I marked, uh, and actually, I'm, I'm going to say this, I was the top marking examiner in the country for this series. I'm just putting that out there. I'm twiddling my non-existent moustache at the moment. <laughs> uh, the actual, the average mark, the average mark for a nine marker is about three or four which is crazy because when I was working with you guys, you were regularly coming in at top of level two, level three. So you can smash these. Revision, knowing the structure is key. Quite proud of my successes with that exam series. It was a good exam this year. Uh, right, okay. Uh, I'll do a walkthrough video for that exam, for the exams this year as well. Okay, identify one producer from the Savannah Grasslands. Lion King. Producer, shrub, next one. Okay, figure six, outline the effects on the ecosystem if the mouse population were to reduce due to disease. So let's have a little look at these mice. There we are. So if they were to reduce due to disease, it wouldn't be a small problem. Get it? Small mice. <laughs> if the mice population reduces, the caracal population will drop because they won't have as much food uh, or as much mice to eat, so their energy levels will drop. Then the snake population will go down. Then the baboon population will go down and so on and so forth. Or you could go the other way. You could say the amount of grass would go up. So therefore the amount of grasshoppers would go up. Okay, so you can go the other way as well. But make specific link to figure six. Two marks, EC, okay, generally. But I would probably just look to make here like two evidence points, okay. Caracals will go down because, snakes will go down because, okay. So keep it really short and sweet, really straightforward. Uh, well, yeah, easy. Just complete that. So just take your time. Name the ecosystem the climate graph represents? Ooh, this is a nice question. Let's have a little look. So a steady amount of rainfall, a stable temperature. I'm gonna say that that is a tropical uh, rainforest. State what is meant by biodiversity. It is basically, well, it's a, uh, a large variety of species there's lots of different things living in that area there we go complete figure eight by adding in the correct term to the nutrient cycle litter soil so this one here would be biomass i can't get it in there we go biomass straightforward that's a nice nutrient cycle i like that uh, deforestation is causing huge environmental damage around the world 
with reference to figure eight, explain how this may affect the nutrient cycle. So if we have a little look, there would be less trees in the biomass. So therefore there would be less nutrients finding their way into the litter, meaning that there would be less nutrients finding their way into the soil, meaning that soils will degrade, which means that there will be less biomass because the soils aren't as good. So uh, you could say less plant life or less flora because there's not as many nutrients. Okay. You could talk about how there will be less trees. So as a result, okay, there will be less roots leading to more soil erosion. So less roots equals more soil erosion equals more nutrient runoff and leaching. So again, there's a few ways you can go about this. 2.8, is this 2.8? Yeah, a couple of wonderful pictures here. We can see uh, some selective logging and replanting in the Brazilian rainforest with the Amazon and then a charity in Peru educating locals on conservation so using figure 9 and figure 10 in your own knowledge so your own AO1 suggest which is basically that hidden explain how different strategies clue there it's plural more than one are used to manage tropical rainforests sustainably. Sustainably there is that key word. Okay, so we're looking for ECS times two. And that stretch should try to link back to or hook back to sustainability in that. Now, figure nine and figure ten are leaning you towards replanting. Or. The technical terminology for it, afforestation. I believe that's the way you spell it. My, my spelling is well off the mark at the moment. Um, and then you've got education on conservation. So basically, how do these work? How do they make, how do both of them manage the same the rainforest sustainably well when we're thinking about sustainability we're thinking about that providing for today without damaging the needs of tomorrow okay again i'm not going to labor the point too much here because i'm not going through a uh, you know, a soul question breakdown, which I might actually start doing. That could be a good little series to do. But again, ECS times two, hidden explain, A for us in education, how does it work? There you go. Paragraphs, link back when you can. For one named global ecosystem, describe the main features of its soil. There's a number of different ways you could go for this. You could talk about, uh, you could talk about hot deserts, could say the soil you could say they're mineral rich they're crusty they're dry for tropical rainforest you could talk about how they are infertile high in iron and latisol there's a number of ways to go about that and then finally your nine marker here so ecs times three to what extent, so there's your command, is desertification caused by climate change in areas on the fringe of the hot desert? So you're doing the hot desert question because that is that is what we study. So to what extent is desertification caused by climate change in areas on the fringe of the hot desert? So you're thinking to yourself, well, actually, is it climate change that 
is it is it mostly climate change that causes desertification in the desert fringe so you're thinking well do i agree or disagree uh with this now look that's up to you to decide me i guess in my position now i would say no i i don't think it's climate change as such there are other factors as well so i would maybe start mine by saying uh, I do not fully agree because what your revision should tell you is actually one of the reasons for desertification is over farming or over grazing I should say with the animals but then you might say well actually climate change does have an effect but actually so does deforestation humans deforesting then you provide that summary at the end. Okay. So again, like I say, ECS times three. I'm not doing question breakdowns here, like full question breakdowns. It's just that little overall. But you're going through with that there. So your summary there would be mostly negative. But you could go the other way. If you do agree climate change is causing it, so you go climate change, yep. X will actually deforestation, but then you could do another climate change argument and then your summary there would be a support for climate change. So it, it basically depends what your opinion is. Okay. Here, okay, you're really looking for that revision to pull you, like to pull you home. Okay. And to what extent is asking for an amount? Okay. It wants you to say, I fully agree. I partially disagree. OK, that I have done videos on this on my channel. Check out the command words uh, videos. They can support you with that as well. OK. OK. Physical landscapes uh, in the UK give a, a four figure grid references uh, reference in figure 11 that features the beach. Well, there's a few here. You could have basically anything along this area here. So, yeah, I'm not going to do the answer, but you can figure that out for yourself. OK, it's a lovely map, that. Uh, again, six figure reference. I'm not going to do it right here, right now. But this here, it should be easy peasy marks as long as you've revised the skill. So literally here, one mark, two mark, easy peasy. Now, 3.3 is a really nice question. OK, so we can see here we're looking at a really kind of elongated area of headland. OK, there's a lot happening here. You can see a bit of a wave cut platform there. OK, and you can see where this resistant rock is jutting into the sea. Now, the photographer is facing this direction. So they're basically looking at it head on. If we look here that means they're effectively looking at it in that direction if that's north then that is east so the photographer is facing east it's a really good question that so look out for those ones okay uh, don't rush them uh, the table in uh, the table below in figure 13 gives definitions for three different coastal processes. Write the corresponding letter into the box. C is missing for some reason. Downhill movement of weather material, that is mass movement, so that's B. Wearing away of material by moving force, that is erosion, so that there will be C, which is weathering. So back, there you go, revision again, just pull you through. For an area of coastline that you have studied, name a major landform of erosion or deposition and explain how it has been formed. Now, again, when it says name, in the context of this question, in my mind, it's not looking for a specific named geographical area, i.e. Old Harry Rocks. I think what this is really looking for is just that landform. OK, so for erosion, you could have uh, you could have a stack stump system. Recently done some European videos on stacks and stumps. Have a little look. Definitely plug in other videos in my channel there. Deposition, you can have beaches. 
uh, you could have uh, spits, okay. Uh, now you could have bays for this one as well, actually, bays and headlands. The area of coastline you could make mention to, just to sort of say, look, you know, I know it is the Holderness Coast. So that is the area of coastline that you study. If you're from another school, obviously you put down your specific area of study. So you could say, for example, uh, one major landform of erosion on the Holderness Coast is a stack and stump. And then you would explain how that forms. Now, remember, my guys, okay, ECS doesn't really fit into this. So this would be, that's right, our favourite, the process model. Firstly, secondly, thirdly, so on and so forth. It's taking me way back this. Okay, six marks. So with reference to a named example you have studied, discuss the success of a coastal management scheme used to protect and preserve the coastline in the UK. Now, because this is a discussion question, this kind of fits itself to ECS. So ECS times two. And a named example for us in terms of what we study in my school is Hornsey. Now, I'm not going to get into the technicalities of this question because <laughs> I'm a little rusty on this. Remember, it's natural for human beings to become a bit rusty and forget if they've not revised it recently. Uh, again, I'm going to start to look at doing some more focused question videos. But here you could talk about elements of defence such as like seawalls, groins, so on and so forth. But here with this discussion, we're looking for generally some good and some bad. So on the one hand, seawalls are effective at protecting and preserving because, however, they are also expensive, so on and so forth. Okay. But mentioning Hornsey as a specific area is key here. Got to get that in. Oh, come on. There we go. River landscapes, uh, the Line Her River in Cornwall. Using figure 14, give one piece of evidence that this part of the river is in its lower course. Well, well, well. It's very wide. The areas around it are very flat. There are marsh areas. There is a tidal pond. There's a few things you could have here. Six figure reference, there you go. For free, land use, agriculture or farming. Two factors leading to deposition. Uh, I don't know, a decrease in velocity and energy. So, uh, so the river deposits uh, and size of sediment. There you go. Size of the rocks. Uh, for a river you have studied, so for my guys, that will be the River Tees. Name a major landform of erosion or deposition and explain how it has been formed. Uh, again, this is a process model, so firstly, secondly, thirdly, fourthly, so on and so forth. You need that explained, so it's going to be a bit of AO1 and 2. Use your head here. Uh, be smart about answering this question. Where is the where are the marks in this question for me? The marks here, high force. So we're talking about basically the formation of a waterfall, high force on the River Tees. Perfect. There we go. I am planning at the moment. I do find myself in the north. I've seen the River Tees with my own eyes. It's amazing, and I'm gonna go visit High Force soon so check out that video when i do go visit it when i make it if i've already made it go look at it again why not uh four six with reference to a named example of a flood management scheme in the uk discuss the costs and benefits of the scheme so a bit like the coastal one right in my mind immediately there are two examples you can put you can come to for my guys for this one here you could do Yarm. 
or you could do the T's barrage. Okay, as two examples of flood management. And remember, it is a discussion, so we're generally looking for the good and bad. So you might get into a discussion about the T's barrage, generally what's good about it, and generally what's bad about it. It is a discussion, so play it safe. You probably want a little bit of a summary at the end as well. So in summary, I believe this. But again, you don't have to get into too much detail in that summary because it is only a six marker. With these questions, you really want to saturate it with that revision and that AO1. You know, the T's barrage cost X amount of pounds. This is a disadvantage. However, the money it saves in flood damage repair is worth the cost. You know, so there's lots of different ways you can go about this, but your revision is absolutely key. Check out my uh, channel and more videos for more guidance on, on sort of uh, the AO1 around this as well. Glaciers, if you did the glaciers questions, you numpties, my lot, you don't do the glaciers questions. But remember, in the actual exam, if you do the glaciers question, you will not be penalised for it. Okay, so if we go back to, just take, oh, hang on, come on. Where is it? There it is. So you either do three, four, or five. So say if you do all of them, it will pick the two that you get the most marks on. Okay? So if you do all three, but actually get quite decent marks on five, it'll take those marks instead. Okay? So it'll take the marks from whichever two are the highest. But don't do all three follow the follow the rules so for you guys my year 11s you only do coasts and rivers right i've definitely run over time okay so that was my first walkthrough in a while do i feel a bit rusty yeah i do feel a bit rusty but that's fine that's okay i need to get back into the habit so here we are that was your that was your walkthrough I hope it was useful. I will be doing more soon and some question breakdowns. But there we go. I hope you're all well and I'll see you all soon. Thank you very much, everybody.